Welcome back to DoomTube ATX. This is Chief Doomsday bringing you the first episode of Doom TV, a series similar to Doom on film with a focus on classic and streaming television programs. While I probably could lump the Doom TV content under the same umbrella as my Doom on film content, I feel that certain television programs command a level of respect worthy of their own program with a specific focus on what makes these programs work so well. Ironically enough, the first subject we'll be tackling on Doom TV is a recently premiered HBO Max series that is a direct continuation of the James Gunn directed film The Suicide Squad, a film covered in my Doom on Film series. That series, of course, is Peacemaker, starring WWE icon turned movie star John Cena in the titular role. Jennifer Holland, Steve Agee, and to a lesser degree, Viola Davis, all return to reprise their roles from the original film, with Danielle Brooks, Chikudi Awuji, and Freddie Stroma all joining the Argus Black Ops Squad. Standing in various oppositional positions to this crew are Robert Patrick as Peacemaker's controversial and complicated father, Newt Lee as the deceptively dangerous judo master, and a pair of detectives played by Annie Chang and Lachlan Monroe. The series picks up essentially right where the film left off. Peacemaker is being released from prison after completing the secondary objective by killing Colonel Rick Flagg. Harcourt and Economos have been reassigned to a team led by Amanda Waller assignee Clemson Mern, and Waller has also assigned Leota Adebayo to the team without notifying anyone on the team that Leota is her daughter. Waller has a new assignment for the team she has assembled. To identify and eliminate a parasitic race of creatures infiltrating any unsuspecting target that they can physically infiltrate and puppet. A job she has titled Project Butterfly based on the appearance of the creatures. With tensions running high in multiple directions, monumental personality clashes, and a general lack of trust driving all parties involved, the team must move forward in the hopes of achieving their Amanda Waller assigned goal. While I personally love the Suicide Squad film, I will readily admit that I was less than excited about the fact that Peacemaker, of all characters, would be the one getting a solo show. I did enjoy John Cena's performance as the character in the film, despite my past indifference to his wrestling career, but he was far from my favorite character in the film. With the knowledge that I would have to stomach quite a bit of Cena if I was going to enjoy the series, I went in as optimistically as I could. But one moment in the premiere episode erased all of my doubts and concerns. The opening credits, set to the instantly catchy Do You Want to Taste It by Wigwam. It's no secret that James Gunn is a fan of folding in dance sequences into his films. As two of his recent biggest films, the MCU Guardians of the Galaxy movies, each prominently featured dancing sequences courtesy of Star-Lord and Groot. It should come as no surprise then that this opening sequence is an element the gun actually pinned into the script. According to SlashFilm.com, he wrote very clearly that we open on Peacemaker standing in the middle of the space and he starts to do this weird dance and then Vigilante and Adebayo fold in. And then it became a little more general, like, and then other people fold in, and so on. And then he wrote with very clear direction, they all do this weird dance with a straight face. No emotion. And then at the end, Eagly flies in and joins the group. So all of that was spelled out. That was in the script from the beginning. Um, I had, uh, uh, there's a woman by the name of Carissa Barton who is, uh, who I hired to do the choreography for us. And um, she happens to be the wife of my good friend, Alan Tudyk, the, the actor. And which was just a coincidence. I didn't know when I hired her. But she did a fantastic job. I really just wanted something very, very weird. It came in from the, I remember uh, Daniel Brooks coming into me and like, what are we doing? Like, what, is, what is this? And I'm like, just look totally serious. You're not having fun. You're not, you're just be very, 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 very serious. And, you know, telling Carissa, like, we just got to make the dance as ridiculous as it could possibly be while they remain completely serious. But Carissa really helped me to put that together and put that together. She was the one that designed it. She did an amazing job. Thanks to the contributions of Barton, Gunn's general vision had enthusiastic life breathed into it. 
And whether or not Barton and company knew it at the time, Gunn's idea morphed into its own miniature story within the greater story that, purposefully or not, says quite a bit about the group dynamics and narrative path of the characters in Peacemaker. I will premise all that is stated moving forward that I have only seen the first five aired episodes of the scheduled eight to be aired. And while I largely will be navigating within the realm of speculation, there will be information in my breakdown that would definitely be considered spoilers. Moving forward, be warned. Let's start by taking a look at the order the characters in the opening are introduced in. As the star of the show and the center of the narrative, it makes total sense that Peacemaker would be the first person you see in the opening. As he literally steps into the main spotlight, the lights come up to reveal Vigilante on stage right and Adebayo on stage left who, in their own way, mimic the moves of Peacemaker. Perhaps the most interesting moment of this trio comes when the camera rotates to block Vigilante just as Adebayo is making the same motion as Peacemaker or Don in his signature helmet. This is the first of many moments within this dance that will mirror key moments in the series. As episode 5 ended with Adebayo donning the X-ray vision helmet, only to learn Mern's secret. Right on cue, Mern, led by Harcourt, come busting out of a door located in the wings of stage left. The two are joined by Konamos as the camera pans towards center stage and in an exaggerated motion partly read as a display of might and partly read as a bombastic insertion into Peacemaker's life, this trio joins the original trio. By this point, Kia, the wife of Adebayo portrayed by Elizabeth Ludlow, has suddenly appeared in formation with Adebayo and Vigilante. And just as we were wondering where Peacemaker is, he slides in risky business style to not only take his place in the center of all the characters, but to seemingly separate Kia from Adebayo, though possibly not deliberate. This particular placement could be a symbol of the strain put on Kia and Adebayo's relationship due to the stress Adebayo feels from the monumental amount of responsibility placed on her for Project Butterfly, specifically the task of befriending Peacemaker in hopes of betraying him. As the chorus kicks into gear, the seven collective cast members on screen go through a series of marionette-like shuffles and deeply inappropriate hip thrusts. All this peacemaker promenades front and center while swinging a massive gun around in a dramatic circle. While Mern can be seen if one focuses directly on him, he is the least visible of all the characters during this sequence, which could either be coincidental, or it could be an indicator that all is not what it seems with Mern. A bit of speculation that turns out to be true. As the collective advances Busby Berkeley style towards the camera, everyone sans Peacemaker gives the audience the middle finger salute, with Kia being displayed prominently front and center during this moment, likely due to the damage that Argus has done to her relationship with Adebayo. As the first major sequence of the opening credits comes to a close, Peacemaker aims his gun point blank at the camera and fires. The scene goes white before quickly fading to Augie Smith, father of Peacemaker, replacing him positionally. While staring blankly and coldly dead into the camera, Augie does a dive in motion, placing his hands waist high before turning both palms up, and once again, displaying a bit more hip thrust than a viewer is likely comfortable with. This gesture not only comes off as a general statement of defiance, but as we learn more about Augie's past as the White Dragon, it comes off as a general F you to the world at large, not just those within the world of Peacemaker. As Augie performs this signature move, the camera zooms by him, revealing the core members of the Argus team and Vigilante standing just behind him, though once again, Mern is largely obstructed from view. Harcourt, Adebayo, Vigilante, and Mern give some textbook jazz hands and spirit fingers, and indicated their collective participation in the wrongful imprisonment and antagonization of Augie as the camera zooms by. As amazing as Augie's move was, it is immediately usurped by Economos, whose flailing and violent slam of an invisible figure mirrors his glow up from keyboard warrior to force to be reckoned with throughout the course of the series. The third sequence focuses mainly on the satellite supporting characters found in Peacemaker. This sequence is set off by Detective Song, 
who along with their partner Detective Fitzgibbon and a local police officer do a brief but expressive dance symbolizing their being caught up in the bigger picture of the Argus Black Ops mission. This is followed in rapid succession by a graceful move from Jamil, a hospital janitor with a degree from MIT, a barrel roll from Vigilante, and a quick little jig of delight from Augie's annoying and nosy neighbor. The final sequence finds all of the aforementioned characters arranged around Peacemaker, mirroring his continually ridiculous dance moves. As the camera pans to eye level, keen viewers will notice Judo Master emerging from a stage right trap door before a cut puts Peacemaker and Judo Master on the frame together. Much like their numerous tussles mid-season, Peacemaker's strength plays against Judo Master's natural grace eventually leading to Peacemaker posing triumphantly with Judo Master on his shoulders. Just as the song wraps up with his signature Throw Your Dog the Invisible Bone statement, Peacemaker's sidekick eagerly swoops into the frame, just under the elaborate Peacemaker title. He lands front and center on the stage, raises his wings triumphantly and screeches, signaling the opening's end. With such a rich opening disguised as a comical and farcical throwaway sequence, not to mention the jarring way it erupts into Act 1 of each episode, I found myself immediately sold and ready to tune in weekly to Peacemaker. With only three episodes left to tie up an alien invasion with potential worldwide implications, not to mention the handful of side issues that have arisen in the midst of Argus poorly keeping their eyes on the prize, I look forward to seeing just how much things will spiral out of control. With each passing episode, it feels like I gained a bit more insight into the choices made for the opening sequence, which leads me to hope that at the conclusion of episode 8, I will see the opening in a completely different light than I did the first time I had the pleasure of it blowing my mind. What, one of the fun things that you'll see as you watch the, the episodes of the series is it plays a different role in every episode. Like, I know people are going to be able to skip over it. I hope they don't. Because it plays a different role in every every series, you know, like you know, it, it just always tells a different story. And you see, as as our story gets darker and deeper and more sad, that the dance itself kind of becomes more sad and more serious and less funny. And so it's interesting to see in that. Way. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Doom TV on Doom Tube ATX. If you dig what I'm putting down, feel free to leave a like and a comment. And if you're up to continue taking this journey through the world of media with us here then please don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. And, uh, you know, encourage others to do the same. In the description will be a whole bunch of information and links about our topic for today. And until next time, keep that love for film, TV, music, YouTube, whatever. Burning bright.